Hello and welcome along to Mondo Chal About Movies. My name is John and this video is going to be part two of when John Hall came over with them amazing books from Alex. Now there's three books in here and at the end of the video I'll do like I did on the other video. I will come back and I will show you what they are and I'll go through them on the overhead video. And again I just want to say thanks to Alex for sending these things across. They are absolutely amazing. Can't thank you enough. And it was great to talk with John through these books. And then stick around to the end, you will see what is in these books. I will show you everything in them because there's some amazing stuff in here. And once again, take it away, John. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the uh, Illustrated Frankenstein by John Stalker. Again, um, I've had a flick through this. You know, it's, it doesn't really appeal to me, you know, but uh, it may well appeal to you. It certainly does. Mm -hmm. I love stuff like this. I've got a few books of Frankenstein. Frankenstein is my favourite universal monster, so yeah. that's a big bust for me. I think they've got the best run of films because the werewolf ones are all right, but he tends to go on with other uh, monsters. Yeah, uh, Dracula is a bit kind of, you've done one and then vanished, you know, mm. that type of thing, uh, yeah. and then come back, sort of. But Frankenstein is the one that kind of... Consistency. Yeah, right? right? consistency. Um, now, this here, this picture, this famous monster's picture, famous monster of film, Filmland, I don't think I had that one, mm. but I do remember I had a really, and I, I will find it somewhere, but if I don't, I'll put the cover on round about here. Right. And it was this, with one of my favourite comics ever, oh. of Frankenstein. <laughs> the way it was drawn mm. looks exactly the same as the drawn on that one. Oh, that's so right. one okay. pops out at me immediately. Yeah, it goes in about Mary Shelley and that. And, uh... So it sounds like it gives you like a bit of a history from how the character came to be. Have you ever watched yeah. that? The 1910 Frankenstein? No. Oh, 10 minutes long. I've seen that still. Um, yeah. Dean Times mine. It's quite good, actually. All oh, right. It's quite uh, freaky. There's a good one. again. I yeah. tell you what, you pop the because actually, the, the, it's not a 4K, but the 4K remastered Blu ray mm. looks amazing. You know the sharpness on it? Yeah. It's can't believe it. Was that Paul Wegener? Was it uh, W pronounced Paul Wegener? Yeah. Wegener, yeah. Mm. Apparently there's three golden films, but only the last two of them have only got one. Mm -hmm. And I think the one that they've got isn't the first one as well. Mm -hmm. I would love to see in the trilogy Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff. I mean, you know, again, uh, I think about the only actor I think Mario Bava really got along with, apparently. Um, oh, really? Yeah, apparently, uh, if I'm not mistaken, again, I'm sure somebody will let me know if I'm wrong. Um, I believe Bava wasn't too enamoured with actors in general, but the one... Uh, the one he got on with, oh, the best was always Boris Karloff, and I think he got on well with Cameron Mitchell as well. Um, now, what I'm going to say, this has blown my mind here. You've got like, yeah, because mm -hmm. you've got all that stuff, and you've got the, the universal stuff, mm -hmm. going to Glenn Strange, who was the last monster, mm -hmm. and you think that that's good. Yeah. But what I'm going to say here is, it takes you into the hammer. The hammer era. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to do that. I thought it might just be the universe. Well, it's a pleasant surprise. Yeah. So yeah. you've got the whole of the, now I'm a huge fan of the Frankenstein. Well, yeah, no. In the hammer as well. So. Well, that's it. Yeah. So it cut the cars both universal and in the hammer. That, that's, that freaked me out. That. Is that Freddie Jones? Yeah, yeah. Freddie Jones. Yeah. When they were doing that. That really, that movie petrified me. There's uh, Darth Vader. Yeah. Right. Well, I did actually see in, uh, in, the, in the late 90s when he was doing a signing session at Forbidden Planet in Newcastle City Centre um, alongside Gunnar Hansen from Texas James Hall Massacre. Is that when you got me that? that, that uh, uh, John, I, I know that I keep talking about this, but John was John got me Gunnar Hansen's. It would have been then, because that was literally the only time I met him. Um, and the thing was, you know, actually... Um, I still got it, obviously. Yeah, oh, hey, yeah, yeah. it was. I mean, I've still got mine, but... To be honest with you, um, you know, I'll confess I wasn't particularly interested in, in seeing Dear Prongs. I, I, I sort of just I moved straight on the gun of hands because he was he was Leatherface. You know, he was the guy I want I want to um, I want to see. Well, you like, know, uh, all right, and Darth, whatever. Well, that well, yeah, exactly. You know, maybe maybe the force wasn't with me on that particular day. I don't know, but uh, you know, but I mean, looking in hindsight now, I would have probably actually spent time talking to Dear Prongs. Uh, but back then, it was more yeah. or less the case of because I was. I was into the into the, like the you know the, the classic horror of Texas Chainsaw Massacre that sort of thing. Flesh for Frankenstein. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's there's Lord here. Yeah, there's his friend, the, the monk. You know, yeah, that's right. There's Otto. Yes. To go in to do what? But but he, that's his friend with the Nazm. The Nazm. Oh, yeah. I, everyone's a Nazm. What's it? What's it? Two two women, one man. He must be very strong. Look at this Nazm. 
you couldn't even write that now. This is amazing. I'm really uh, really excited to read this. This is this is the type of thing I didn't know anything about this. I'm I'm being saliv- I know <laughs> salivating this. If someone gave me this for a Christmas present, I'd be like, you know, let's have a look and see when this is from out of interest. 1980. 1980. 1980, I think. I think you can still get copies of this on eBay as well, if I'm not really? mistaken. Yeah. And uh, next up, we, next up, we've got the um, complete Night of the Living Dead film book by John Russo, not John Russo. Now, I remember seeing this one advertised in various horror magazines over the years. Um, I never picked up a copy, you know. I never thought I'd end up with a copy, but again, thanks, Alex. I have, you know. Again, again, I'm more of a Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead kind of guy. So, don't get me wrong. As much as I appreciate Night of the Living Dead, I'll, I'll be the first to give it its, its classic um, reputation horror. You know, I don't deny that. Yeah. You know, um, I prefer the later one. So, yeah, yours to uh, peruse. That's great. These are just fantastic. These are, like I say, if I was in the bookshop, I would have picked these up. Like, no problem. Mm. It's the type of thing that used to, because don't forget, I thought there was plenty of times back in the day, there was only, there was literally telly if they showed them. Oh, yeah. Or books. You yeah. know, nothing else. And was there. Well, you've got to remember, you know, they're dead. They're all messed up. You know, and, um, yeah, but it, right. do you know what it is? I mean, when I was a kid, the very first time I saw this was on the um, the Intervision pre-cert, Alpha pre-cert. Oh, yeah. And um, I didn't know at the time, believe it or not, it was black and white, even though the stud on the back was black and white. You would have thought yeah. I would have put two two together, but, you know, I was young and daft. Like I see, um, these days I'm just daft. But... Um, script in there as well. Yeah. All, well, it's, yeah, just uh, excerpts of it. Um, and I remember when, as soon as I put the, played that pre-cert video, I realised I was watching a black and white film. No. Turn it straight off. I could not, because yeah. from for were there because I was only I was I was even I was a preteen at the time. I really couldn't uh, conceive watching something black and white. I mean nowadays there's not a problem as I got older. I appreciate more black and white stuff more. But we are back when when I was a preteen, it wasn't option to watch something in black and white. It had to be in colour. So as soon as I realised that was black and white, I turned the video off. And it wasn't until in the late 80s, when the colorized version came out, you know, it's shock horror, the colorized version. Um, I picked up a copy from, I believe, Hamley's in the Thumbler Street. Oh, yeah, God, I, I didn't ask Hamley, yeah, I'm going back to the late 80s, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, pick- actually, I would say yeah. 87, 88. about there. And I picked up a pre served copy of the Battle Creek, uh, Big Brawl from there, really. Big Box Guild it was a pre served. Yeah, this was only in, in yeah. there, Bob and Toys. This was the late 80s, so what was a pre served wow. doing? Yeah, it was a pre yeah. video doing in a exactly you know, a, a, a prestigious toy store like Hamley's. Yeah, but, no, it shut down. Well, uh, well, uh, yeah, you know, might, you know, might have been too many pre I don't know. But anyway, that's what that that was when I picked up a colorized version of N O T L D, and um, after that, I did sort of warm to it a bit more, even though I was still a bit dubious about it. But over the years, you know, I picked up the DVDs, I picked up the you know the 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 um, the Blu-rays, you know, and again. I'll give it. I'll give it a stew, you know, for the for, for breaking ground within the horror genre. Certainly, with the zombie movies are concerned. Yeah. But for me, I prefer Dawn of the Dead. Well, I love that. I, um, I've got the same story. I went in the uh, Woody Bay Playhouse mm-hmm. uh, to watch. I'd seen Dawn of the Dead there and loved it. So I thought, Night of the Dead. This has got to be. You know, I didn't know what what it was first, second, third. I hadn't got a clue. Mm-hmm. I just went in to say, "It's Living Dead. It's got to be great and all that." Set up, set up, and it would come up with you know the the, the car going down the road. Now, oh, yeah, I don't something about the screen, it's it's in black and white, so I thought I'll it'd write itself in a minute. So, obviously, it was a bit scratchy and that, yeah. And then I realized after about five minutes, I thought, no, it's not gonna, it's, it's black and white. Mm. I just went out. No, I, I saw your mom out in the way out. So, oh, so right, you should, here again, get yeah, we should, we should put we should pause down the back alley for a girl on motorcycle, yeah, on so the motorbike. And I says, I'm not watching a black and white, there, yeah. I says, can I have a uh, Orange maid, please. I'm off. I'm off. You shoot another video for me, channel. <laughs> That's brilliant. That. Yeah. Uh, the, sure. Good. the next you one. Tell. Mm-hmm. Alex is in there. He the was. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, he was. He was. Um, it's in great, great condition, considering mm-hmm. these are really old. They're, they're being looked at, which is good. Yeah. They haven't been abused. Have that's they? that's what I mean. And like I say, I mean he he likes his horror stuff as well as other other you know, genres as well. Yeah. And again, like I say, he knows his stuff, so he's a he's a you know he's got a great mind on the subject. So next book is classics of the horror film. Uh, let's have a look from from the days of the silent film to the Exorcist. So we're probably talking up to, up to about seventy three here. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I ever had a copy of this when I was a kid, that's uh, but the name does ring a bell. 
you know, but again, I'll flick through. Yeah. Well, as you know, I used to get horror books probably every birthday or Christmas, and they were something I would go back and look at a million times and mm-hmm. then hope that they would turn up. You would look at it and you think, I wouldn't hope that that's going to come on the telly this weekend. Yeah. And sometimes it did. Oh, be to have to go, yeah, you have to go back and say, right, I saw Ghost of Frankenstein last week. What's the next one? Mm-hmm. And you go back to these for a bit of, um, you know, sort of, what's it called? Like, like a reference. reference yeah. yeah, you have to bear in mind this is a, a long way of your pre-internet. A cycle? Cycle, yeah. A long way of pre-internet. Yeah. Um, so, you know, books were... Like you're know, a very valuable source of just stuff now. It was yeah, the only way. Then, you know, um, there was no other way. The only other way to get was talking to people in the school. Word of mouth. Yeah, yeah. That might put embellish the story. Yeah. As we talked about before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is amazing. So I'm a big fan of silent horror films. What do you, what's your thoughts on silent horror films? Are you, can you? Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, um, if I had more time to play with, I would probably. Um, Give them, give them look at. I mean, I've got nothing against signing films, you know. Uh, personally, you know, I just prefer, I just prefer mm. sport, sport and um, sport and dialogue. Don't get me wrong; it's a bit like universal horror. You know, it's uh, it's got a, you know that particular uh, brand of horror has its fans, and understandably so. Um, I've watched some of these universal ones. I can see the appeal again. Not really, not really my thing. Not really my thing. But again, um, I've got no problem watching watching those particular films. But it's something I watch on like a. Lazy Sunday afternoon, you know, if that was, you know, the weather was a bit in coming yeah. outside. I had nothing else to do. I'll chill, you know, put my feet up. There's nothing else to watch. There's like, you know, a universal horror on. You might give it a go, you know. Um, that's a nice picture. I see that picture. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. Quite, quite moody in that, you know. Yeah. Like, Actually, what you would do is you would see on here, you would see these pictures and you would be like, can't, you can't wait to see that particular yeah. film because, um, you would remember this uh, picture yeah. from it. So you'd be looking for that. Yeah. And sometimes it may be a publicity still, so it wasn't in the movie, and you would think, oh. But but anyway, yeah. it's good to get these uh, really spooky pictures. Well, it's, it's like it's like the Evil Dead, you know, the, the, the American poster for Evil Dead, where it's got the hand coming out of the grave, yeah. grabbing the woman by the thought. Now, some people expect to see the film, but you don't get that. You know, it's purely for publicity purposes. Or like the poster for Jaws too, where the shark coming up behind the, the woman on the skis. Aye. Now... Um, if you were to watch Joe, still expecting that to happen. Yes, the woman gets tapped on the skis, but the shark doesn't come up from behind and I know. you know chomp down it. Yeah, it yeah. never happens, you know. So you know you've you've um, got lower your expectations a bit. You know? This is going to be a bit of an nostalgia trip getting into all this stuff. So stick around for parts three and maybe four. There's some equally amazing stuff coming up, and I can't wait to show you them. So once again, thanks to John Hall and especially Alex for bringing those things over to me. And I just can't thank you enough. And uh, I can't wait to read, read them. I've looked through them, but I want to actually start reading these things properly. So thanks for watching. You take care, especially you, John and Alex. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Cheers.